right, welcome to a screencast, another screencast. It's April 17th, 2013. We're going to be using the Earth Science Reference Table today. I'm going to talk you through how to use page 11 that deals with earthquakes and earthquake waves. Um, just a little quick reminder where the energy gets released, where the uh, of an earthquake is called the focus, the point directly above the focus on land is called the epicenter or on the crust. So if we take a look there are three different types of waves. They actually did a nice job naming these. P waves which are primary waves are the first ones to be released. They're also the fastest. Compressional waves are sometimes called. Um, S waves are secondary waves kind of good, right? They're the second ones to be released. And the last one to be released are surface waves. Would have been nice if we would have called it L waves for the last waves, but they didn't think of that. So if you have an earthquake and you are using a seismograph station that's miles away, the first wave you would receive would be the P wave, then the S wave, and then you'd get the surface waves after that. And that helps us determine where exactly this earthquake is located. So if you look at page 11, and you can, kind of, you can see that the question is, how long would it take a P wave to travel 3,000 kilometers? Well, it's a pretty uh, intimidating page perhaps, but if you break it down and you look a little closely at the y-axis is in time and that's in minutes, and you can see that the epicenter distance is in kilometers. Whatever number it is times 10 to the third power will tell you how many kilometers away it is. So. If this is zero kilometers and this is one kilometer, each one of these lines then must be worth 200 kilometers. So 200, 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1400, and on and on and on. Time, if this is zero and that's one minute, each one of these lines then must be worth 20 seconds when looking at this graph. It's important to keep that in mind. It can get a little bit complicated, but it works out pretty well. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Hello? Oh, Miss Swift, how are you? All right, sorry, Taylor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got your notes on your uh, on your lyrics for that song. I, I, I changed some things. I don't have a whole lot of time right now, but I could go through a couple with you. Yeah, all right. You got it in front of you? Good. So what you have, because the smelly heads are going to joke around, joke around, joke around. You with me? All right, good. I changed it to, because the player is going to play, 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 play. You like it. Should I keep going? All right, good. And then you have your next line says, and the people that don't like me are not going to like me, 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 not going to like me. I changed it to, the haters going to hate, 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 hate. Good, okay, good. And... I have time for um, I have time for like one more, and then your other line, and there's so much more that I have, but your other line, you say, "Infant, I'm going to ignore their comments, ignore their comments, ignore their comments, ignore their comments." I kind of modernized it a little bit. I said, uh, "Baby, you like that? Okay, good. Um, I'm just gonna shake, shake, shake it off, shake it off. Cool. You like it? All right. Listen, I got to get back to uh, something a lot more important. No offense, but this uh, screencast thing. Yeah, I know, I, know, I know that you're a subscriber and you love it. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. All right. Oh, did I leave it running? Oh, how embarrassing. So anyway, if you take a look at this graph, and the question again, just to repeat, how long would it take a P wave to travel 3,000 kilometers? If I go 3,000 kilometers, make my little dotty poo, and this is the P wave, just a little close-up of it, and if I do a dotted line across, and I can see that this is five minutes here. That's five minutes, 20 seconds, five minutes, 40, and six minutes. I can then can conclude it would take a P wave five minutes and 40 seconds to travel 3,000 kilometers. And another way to write it is five colon 40. So far, so good? All right. How long would it take an S wave to travel 3,000 kilometers? Well, again, the same method applies. I go up 3,000 kilometers and make my little dotty poo over here. I do my little dotted line across, and I could see estimation was it takes about 
10 minutes and 5 seconds for an S wave to travel 3,000 kilometers. And another way to write that is 10 colon 0, 0,5. See how that works? All right. So, what's the time difference between the arrival of a P wave and the arrival of an S wave if the earthquake was 3,000 kilometers away? You can do it in two different ways. You could do the mathematical approach. Or you could find the mathematical difference between 10 minutes and 5 seconds and 5 minutes and 40 seconds and do that math and have a lot of fun with that. Or there's another way that's a little bit easier. <clears throat> Again, um, using just a piece of paper. And if I move to here, I take this piece of paper and I move it over here. And now I'm lined up with a 3,000 line. Okay. Just making sure I'm on the 3,000. And through the digital wizardry of um, Mimeo, I get my lines. I'm going to use straight lines. I'm going to use the color red so it stands out a little bit, make it kind of thin so I could be exacting. And if I make my mark over here, I'll move it in a second. And I make my mark over here. I have pretty much have marked out a time difference for the P, P wave arrival and S wave arrival time using a piece of paper. Now, not that you need to know this, I'm grouping them together because if I don't, when I move one, they'll all move. So go to grouping, I'm going to group them, go back to full screen. And now when I move this whole thing, I can simply just move it over here, right? And I can see it's about, if I had a guesstimate, like four minutes and 40 sec uh, four minutes, 35 seconds, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I'm not using um, complicated math because sometimes with time, math gets a little bit more complicated. Um, you could see I have a time difference of about four minutes and 35 seconds between the arrival of a P wave and an S wave if the earthquake was 3,000 kilometers away. So that was using, uh, given the distance, what would be the time difference? We could also look at it from the other angle and say, well, if I know my time difference between my arrival of my P wave and my S wave, so let's say if I'm a, working a seismograph station in Seattle, I get my, my P wave arrives and one minute and 50 seconds later, my S wave arrives, I could actually determine how far away the epicenter is from Seattle based upon that data. Same Z for Denver and Houston as well. So let's take a look at this a little more detail, a little more zoomed in there, the digital wizardry of Mimeo. Thank you, Mimeo. Um, <clears throat> so if I know my time difference is one minute and 50 seconds between the arrival of my P wave and S wave, again, I take my handy dandy piece of paper over here. And I don't use the edge of the paper. I just find it's less accurate sometimes. Um, and what I'll do is I will take my marks. I make my mark at zero. See that? And then I go to 150. So there's one, 120, 140, 150 would be about here. Oop, not even close, huh? Uh, about there. So again, beauty of Mimeo. So now we're there. And again, all I have to do is group them together. Exit full screen to do that. Format. I should just remember the keystrokes, huh? Uh, control Shift plus J is a little bit too complicated for me. And then what I would do is I would just move this over here. And I went too far, didn't I? Let's see, one minute and 50 second difference. So here you can see, uh, trying to find the exact spot. I would say it's about. I guess I'm guesstimating about a thousand kilometers. What I also like to do too is again I like to match it back up again and make sure I'm about at the 150. You see how that works? Pretty exciting stuff. See a thousand two hundred is too far. I think we're looking at about a thousand kilometers away if the P wave arrived and one minute and fifty seconds later the S wave arrived. And therefore, I'd see that it is about a thousand kilometers away. Let's take a look at Denver, shall we? Very exciting. So again, a difference of 230. Do the same exact thing. I get my red. Oh, that was silly goose egg. -ish. Sorry about that. I bring over my paper. I just just by I kind of leave a little edge there that way, so I could see the other markings. I do my zero mark, and then I do my what is it? 230. So here's 2, 220, 240, so 230 would be somewhere in the middle, which that is nowhere near. So again, 
fortunately, we can... Oh, no, I moved the paper. Oh, that's okay. A little tough to see, huh? Uh, almost impossible to get in there, then, isn't it? Just going to delete it. How about that? And I'll shake it off, shake it off. Here we go. Good idea for a song, by the way. It's not even close. All right. All right. So I'm just trying to get it to 230 mark. Let's see. That's about close enough. It'll give us a good estimate at least, right? And we'll format. And we'll go grouping and group those and come back up. And if I look here, is, let's see. So obviously it's going to be more than 1,000. There's 1,200. And there is, oops, sorry. There's 1,400. So we're looking pretty much around 1,400 that, that distance would be determined based upon a time difference of 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Hey, wow, I was right. It's almost as if I've done this before. Now, what if there was a four minute difference? Again, move over your piece of paper. Red lines. Ooh, I got that one right on the money. And now uh, let's see. Eh, it's pretty close. I'm all right with that. And then I'm gonna select, 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 and format, grouping. It's a good in-service on using Mimeo too, right? Because that's a real usable skill. All right, let's see. So now here we are at 2,000, right? Way too much. I mean, uh, not not enough of a distance. 2,200. 2,400 is getting close. And if we look, let's see. That's 2,006. Let's see. 2,200, 400, 600, 2,800. Looks like it's too much. 2,600 looks very nice, doesn't it? Let's see. 2,200. 400, 600. Let's see what the answer is. Wow, how exciting. Okay, so now that you have these done, what you would do is you would um, take out your map, which is right over here, and based upon Denver, Houston, and Seattle, we would draw, use the scale over here. We take out our safety compasses because we don't want to use the unsafe compasses there because they're just way too unsafe. We would draw our three circles, and where the three circles intersect would be our actual epicenter. So this was just a quick little in-service that turned out to be longer than I thought on using page 11, which is right over here in Old Glory, in the Earth Science Reference Table to determine the distance to an epicenter and also to interpret the data of a P and S wave. Um, what is the magical word for today? The magical word is alpha. Alpha. And those of you that have me in class will know where I got the name Alpha from. If you walk into my classroom, you could find evidence of the word Alpha because I'm staring at it right now. So from my vantage point in my computer chair, where all power generates from, by the way, um, you can see the word Alpha clear as a bell. Enjoy your day. Let's go Rangers.